what to do when thoughts are driving you crazy. So it's not uncommon during the awakening process to have periods where we feel like the mind is very calm. Life is peaceful. We feel present. We feel like we could never suffer again. And then a day later, there's a thought storm. The mind is raging. We feel endlessly pulled into the mind, into beliefs, into frustrations. We feel like we're reacting to every thought. This tends to come and go for some time throughout this process. So there's no need to be discouraged when it happens because it is par for the course. It's how things go. But I don't want to leave you empty handed. A simple recognition when this happens, when the mind is raging on thought after thought after thought. And more importantly, the thoughts are compelling or they feel like they're distracting us. They feel like they're pulling attention in endlessly is to just acknowledge this is a time for attention to be in the thought gate or the thought and consciousness gate. That's all. We don't have to try to force our attention out of thoughts. We don't have to try to force our attention into the senses, into non-dual experience, when there's a strong pull of our attention into thought. If that's where it wants to go, let it go there. Let it be there. The one thing I would add to this is try not to distract yourself. This is an experience. It will come and go like all experiences. Thought storms don't last forever. But while the thoughts are raging on, the mind is making a lot of noise. Try not to distract yourself. It's very easy at these times to distract ourselves with the usual go-tos. If we can just hold out, stay with the present experience, even if it's uncomfortable, even if there's a lot of restlessness with it, even if we'd rather be anywhere but in this muck of thoughts, this entangled world of thoughts, it can be very valuable to just kind of stick it out. Just wait it out and see. If nothing else, this shows you that everything is transient. Thought storms don't stay forever. No state stays forever. No experience stays forever. Things come and go. In the deepest sense, nothing is ever held on to. There's nothing to push and pull on. But if we convince ourselves that that's what we're doing through distraction, then it can be a little trickier to disentangle this. So if it's possible, just stay the course. Reside in your experience without doing too much to distract yourself away from it. Let the thoughts be there. Let them play out. Let them make their noise, rattle their sabers. So when this is occurring, as I mentioned earlier, it can be very helpful just to recognize that you're perfectly safe in the thought gate because it's also the consciousness gate. It is the gate of the mind stuff. It's the world of mind, the world of thought, the world of reflection. So be it. When we first acknowledge this, then we're not struggling so deliberately with our attention. We just let our attention flow where it wants to flow. And if that's into the thought space, so be it. This will relieve some of the underlying tension. Now, once attention is in the thought space, in the conscious space, in the mind space, you have a lot of strategies to calm the storm or to ride the waves of the storm until it naturally calms. But one way or another, all of those approaches or strategies that you can find in the consciousness playlist are one form or another of just orienting toward thought orienting toward the next belief, orienting toward whatever mental image you're avoiding. If there's a belief that makes you uncomfortable, like this is gonna last forever, I can't handle this, this is overwhelming me, 
then just recognize it as such. Recognize it as a belief. And then become aware of what a belief is made out of. It's made out of thought. So then, where's the resistance? The resistance is often in another thought that just says, and I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to have that thought. I don't want to have that belief. So again, a belief often comes that says, this experience is overwhelming, or this experience is terrible, or whatever descriptors we use internally or externally. And then the next aspect of resistance is often something that says, and I don't want that thought to even be here. The interpretation of the thought itself, we can have resistance to. But once we see that, we recognize, oh, okay, that's the next thought in line. The next thought that wants to be acknowledged and released. And it is, and I don't want to have that thought. A thought can be anything. It can be any belief, any perception about how things are for you right now, how you are, what's wrong, what's wrong with you, what's wrong with life, etc. Any of those thoughts, any of those perceptions or interpretations can be recognized as a single thought right now. You're already closer to reality. The next step is to look around and see, is there something resisting that? Is there something resisting the thought that says I'm uncomfortable? Is there something resisting the thought that says there are too many thoughts. I can't keep track. This anxiety is too much for me. Once we recognize that second order of resistance, we can also recognize that's another thought. Then we can look around again. What else is here? What other interpretations are floating around here? What other interpretations are moving in the mind? And just let them come one by one. Get as close as you can. Don't struggle and wrestle with each thought as if it's some kind of demon, because it's not. What turns thoughts into monsters is when we endlessly push them away, don't want to look closely, when we try to hide from our own thoughts, when we push and pull inside of consciousness. That's what causes us to feel all of the resistance, the reactivity. So reverse that. Whatever's here, I want to feel it, see it. Whatever interpretation's operating, I want to see it closely, spell it out, acknowledge it fully, and then see if there's any resistance to that. Just do this on and on and on without an end goal. If we have an end goal that says, I want to feel better, that's also a thought. There's a thought here that says, I should feel better than I do right now. Okay, there's one thought. I should feel better than I do right now. What happens when I get close to that thought? Feel into what it's made out of. The spaciousness of it. The flexibility of the construct that allows me to even have that thought. That flexibility itself is intrinsic to consciousness. Feel into that. Feel into the movement, fluidity, flexibility of consciousness that forms these thoughts and beliefs. Become curious about it. Move toward it. Move toward any image that's forming in the mind. It may be an image of you. It may be a memory, but it's still an image, still a thought. Move closer to it. Allow it to fully form. Then see what comes next. Is there resistance to that? Is there a thought that says, I don't like that image. I don't like when that comes. I don't like that memory. Then move toward that thought. So what we're doing is we're reversing the gears of a lot of habituation, a lot of habit force of resisting thoughts, avoiding thoughts, pushing and pulling on thoughts. So a thought has no intrinsic resistance. A thought has no intrinsic value, and it can't cause suffering. But our own reaction to it, which essentially is a belief in it, is what causes us to suffer. So we can reverse this whole process by moving toward, becoming fascinated with thought and consciousness, 
seeing that thought is consciousness and consciousness is thought. Noticing there's no separation between any thought form and the sense of the one aware of the thought form, I. It's all one continuum. This continuum is everything you've ever thought, everything you ever could think. It's everything you take yourself to be and everything you take the world to be. So just keep exploring it closer, closer, closer. Orient toward everything. Whatever stirs here is already okay because we're naturally fascinated with it. So move toward the next thought, the next belief, the next image. Just keep at it. If attention wants to be in thought, let it be there. Let's get as close as we possibly can to the experience.